In our ongoing series on repairing broken Windows installs, today we're going to look at what happens when a UEFI system doesn't boot anymore because of a broken bootloader. In fact, we're going to break it ourselves. Stay tuned. In the last video in this series, we dealt with fixing corrupted Windows system files, but what happens when your bootloader is corrupted? Oftentimes, if something goes wrong with your bootloader, you can be locked out of Windows completely. And sometimes you can't even get into recovery. Now, there are several reasons why your bootloader can get corrupted. It could be a bad Windows update or possibly a virus that's taken over your bootloader that really wasn't written very well and causes your bootloader to not work anymore. Sometimes, if you have a failing SSD, it can also cause corruption. That's when I typically see this problem. When I upgrade someone to a new drive and after cloning their old system, it fails to boot. Now, this problem might seem unfixable to many people, but it's actually not that hard to fix. But unfortunately, if you try to search Google for how to fix a broken UEFI bootloader, you'll get a lot of how-tos that give you a lot of outdated information that simply doesn't work anymore. So regardless of what your bootloader problem is, today I'm gonna to show you a method to rebuild the UEFI boot partition completely. This should solve any problems related to your bootloader. But first, we gotta pay some bills. Check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. Now, this video is gonna concentrate specifically on the UEFI bootloader. Unfortunately, at this point in time, there's really not much benefit in running an MBR partition. So if your system is running MBR and it won't boot, then this video isn't gonna help you. However, it's really easy to fix an MBR system. If you guys want me to make a video on that as well, then let me know down in the comments below. Also, keep in mind, what we're doing in this video has a very high probability of really messing your system up if not done correctly. We're going to be completely rebuilding the UEFI partition. That's what allows your system to boot in the first place. So I would highly recommend before following this guide to do a complete backup on your data. Now, if your system currently isn't booting, then use an offline boot CD like Hiren's boot CD in order to back up all your data. Also, make sure to watch this video all the way through to the end before following this guide. Missing any step along the way could leave your system broken and still not booting. So, the first step after you back up your system is you need a way to access the Windows recovery tools. And if your recovery partition isn't accessible, you're going to need a Windows install USB so you can take advantage of the recovery tools. So let's jump on the system and I'll show you how to create one. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need before you start is a USB flash drive. Make sure you get one that's at least eight gigabytes. You can usually pick them up at Staples or any other big box store for pretty cheap. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this USB drive in the system real quick. And as you can see, I already have this one set up as a Windows install disk, so I don't actually have to create one, but I'm gonna show you how to do one so you can get one yourself. So I'm gonna close this up, and we're, the first thing we're gonna do is open up our browser and search for media creation tool, and make sure to pick one for the version of Windows that you have. In this case, it's gonna be Windows 10, but this should work on Windows 11 as well. And if you're doing this in Windows 11, I would use the media creation tool from Windows 11, but we're gonna do Windows 10 right now. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and click on Microsoft's website. Make sure you download this from Microsoft's official site. There's no reason to get this from any other mirror. So you just click on download now, right where it says create Windows 10 installation media. So once you hit download now, it should download it right here. Go ahead and click on it and it will launch the media creation tool. And we can go ahead and close our browser here. 
And it's gonna take a second for things to get going here, so I'm gonna skip ahead to the next step. Okay, so right here, you gotta accept the user agreement, and it's gonna take a minute more to get this thing ready. So we're gonna skip ahead again real quick. Okay, so right here, we've got two different options. We can either upgrade this PC now, or we can create the installation media. So what we're gonna do is create the installation media. So we click on that and hit next, and then go ahead and you can typically use just the default settings right here and hit next again. And then it's gonna ask us for either a USB flash drive or an ISO file. You're gonna to wanna to pick the USB flash drive. And then once you hit next, it'll ask you which drive you wanna use. And obviously you would select the one you'd use and you'd hit next. And from that point, you just follow the rest of the steps and it should create the USB drive for you. Now that we've made our install USB, let's intentionally break this system so it doesn't boot anymore, and I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and click Start and type CMD, and then make sure to open Command Prompt as Administrator here. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is since we're gonna be messing with the BCD in this case, we're gonna go ahead and back it up real quick. And to do that, we're gonna use the BCD Edit tool. And if you type BCD, edit and hit enter, it'll show you what your current BCD looks like. And you can kind of see what different descriptors and stuff like that it's using in order to boot into Windows. So before we do anything at all, we want to back up our BCD so we can recover it in the case that something goes wrong. And you know, it's always kind of nice to have a backup of your BCD anyway, just in case something goes wrong in the future. So to back it up, all you have to do is type in BCD edit forward slash export space and then just name your file and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in cprompt root bcd.bk for backup and then hit enter and it should back up your bcd now if we go down to the root of the directory you can see right here I got my bcd back right there so if you ever want to restore from a backup all you would do is type in bcd edit forward slash import, and then the name of the BCD file that you created. So in this case, it's going to be C drive root BCD BK enter, and it'll go ahead and import it in. And if you type in BCD edit, you can see that it's the same as it was. So now let's break this system so it doesn't boot anymore. To do that, all you're going to do is type BCD edit forward slash set, and then we're going to type in path, and then I'm just going to do backslash win, just like that. And then if we type in BCD edit again, you'll see that now the path is just set to root win, which is really nothing. <laughs> but now what we also want to do is disable the recovery enabled because we don't want recovery to go fix in our system. We want to do that manually. So I'm going to go again, I'm going to type in BCD edit set, but on this time we're going to type in recovery enabled and I'm just gonna change that to no, just like that. And then when we type BCD edit, you'll see that the recovery enabled is set to no. Okay, so now let's reboot this system and see what happens. Now the system shouldn't boot once I reboot it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit start, restart, and we'll see what happens. Might take a second to restart, but hopefully we've successfully broken our system. I highly recommend not doing this at home because, you know, there's no reason to break a fully functional computer unless, of course, you want to make a video showing how to fix it. And there you go. The system now will not boot. It says the application or operating system could not be loaded because of a required file is missing or contains errors. Yeah, I know it contains errors because I made them. So now let's get our USB drive get this thing booted up into recovery, and I'll show you how to fix it. Okay, so you're gonna have to look at either your motherboard or your system manufacturer's documentation to find out how to boot off of a USB drive. On my system, I just hit delete to go into the BIOS and the boot menu is right there. On your system, it might be F12 for Dells or on HPs, it's usually escape to get to your boot menu. However, once you get booted off of your Windows install drive, the next thing you have to do is just go ahead and hit next. And then instead of hitting install now, we wanna click on repair your computer. And from this point, it just gives you the regular recovery console. And then what we wanna do is click on troubleshoot. 
and then from troubleshoot, you could try clicking startup repair. In some cases, that will actually fix your problem. In fact, I bet you it'll fix this system now. However, I wanna show you how to do this manually. So what you're gonna do is click on command prompt. And then from command prompt, the next thing you wanna do is just type in bcd edit, and you can see what your bcd file looks like. And as you can see, here's the error in the bcd file that we introduced ourselves. But what we're gonna do is the very first thing that we wanna look at is we wanna be able to get access to our UAFI drive because typically there's no drive letter on that. So to do that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just type in disk part, and then give it a second to start. Sometimes it'll take it a moment, but you'll get the, the right here, you'll get your prompt for disk part, just like that. And once you get that, we're gonna type in list disk. First, you gotta spell it right, list disk with a space, of course. All right, there we go. So now this will show us two different disks that we currently have installed. Now, as you can see, disk zero is 232 gigabytes, and that one's a GPT partition. That's the one we're looking for. The other one, this is just our USB drive right here. We can disregard that one. We don't need to worry about it. The next thing we wanna do is go ahead and type SEL, and in our case, it's gonna be disk zero, but you're gonna to wanna to correspond with whichever disk your Windows install is installed on. So once I hit that, it'll select that disk, and then we wanna type in list VOL for list volume. And then from there, this will show us all the different volumes. And it actually does show the USB drive, which I think is kind of funny because we selected disk zero, but that's okay. What we're looking for is this one that doesn't have a drive letter and it's gonna be formatted as FAT32 and it's gonna be about 100 megs in size. This is our UEFI partition. This is the one that we're looking for. So for this, we're gonna to wanna to select that specific volume. So for that, you're gonna type in SEL for select and then type in VOL one for volume one, and that'll select volume one. And then from here, we want to assign it a drive letter. So we're gonna type in assign letter, and then we want, want to type equals, and then give it any letter you want. I'm gonna give mine V, but you can give yours any one you want. Just make sure that you remember which drive letter you give it, because we're gonna use that later in the video. So go ahead and hit enter, and it's gonna assign that letter to volume one. And if you want to double check just to make sure it has, you can always type in list VOL to list volumes, and you can see right there that volume one, which is the selected volume with the little star right here, is our 100 meg partition. And at this point, we can go ahead and just hit exit. And then if you go to your V drive and run a directory, you should see an EFI directory. And if you go into that directory, actually, we're gonna wanna write CD EFI, not DIR, and then run a directory again, you'll see two folders in there called Microsoft and called boot. So we wanna go into the Microsoft directory. So if we go into Microsoft and hit enter, do another directory, you'll see you'll have boot and recovery. And we wanna go into boot. And then from there, we're gonna do another directory and you'll see all these files in here. This is your UEFI bootloader. And if you scroll up, you should see your BCD file right here. And that's the file that we modified. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we wanna start over from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to my C drive here and I'm going to go ahead and format the UEFI partition completely. So for that, we just type in format. It's gonna be V drive. And then we wanna put forward slash fs colon fat32 because you want to make sure to format the uefi partition as fat32 and then when you hit enter it's going to warn you that everything on the drive is going to be destroyed go ahead and hit yes enter and there you go for the volume label you don't have to do anything just hit enter and that's it now if we go back to our v drive and hit directory you'll see there's nothing on it so at this point we want to recreate the drive just like it was before. And this should solve any problems that you have with the bootloader. Now at this point, we wanna verify where our Windows install is at because normally it should be on the C drive. So if we go to C here and hit a directory, you'll see that, yep, there's our Windows folder, there's our user folder. So in this case, it is C, but you might have to look around. You can always go into the D drive and look in there to make sure that it's not there too. But in our case, it's in the C drive. We wanna verify where the Windows folder is before we run this next command. So Go ahead and look around your different drive letters and to change drive letters all you do is just put type in the letter itself that you want to go to with a colon and hit enter and it'll switch to that drive so in our case it's going to be c so we're going to do that and we're going to run the command bcd boot space 
And then since we know that our Windows folder is on our C drive, we're gonna go C colon backslash Windows, and then hit space. Then we wanna go forward slash S space V drive, and we're telling it what the UEFI partition is. And that, in that case, it's V drive. If you used a different letter on yours, then make sure to use that letter here. Then we're gonna hit space. We're gonna type forward slash F, another space, and then just type in UEFI and then hit enter and it should rebuild the UEFI partition. And we're gonna double check it real quick here. So we're gonna go ahead and go to V, run a directory and you'll see now we have the EFI folder there. So if we go CD EFI directory, we should see Microsoft and boot just like we did before. So we're gonna go into the Microsoft folder and here we have boot and recovery. So we just like before, we're gonna go into CD boot and then we're gonna do a directory again. Now these are all the files associated with your bootloader as well as all the way down at the bottom right here, you'll see your BCD file. It's at the bottom now because we've essentially replaced everything by reformatting this drive. And if you type in BCD edit at this point, you'll notice that your BCD has changed considerably. However, this is just a generic BCD just to get the system booted. So now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and close command prompt. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit turn off your PC. So now we have to see if it works. And to do that, we just hit the power button and sit back and hopefully our computer will boot into Windows. If it doesn't, I might have to film this section over again. I don't know, we'll see. But here we go. It should boot fairly quickly if it's gonna boot. And it looks like it's working pretty well. So give it one more second and we should be in Windows. And there we go, we're back in Windows. Now, one of the downsides to this method that you should be aware of is that when we rebuilt the UEFI partition, it's just a basic generic BCD file that's been created, like I showed you. It will get your system booted, as you can see, but you will lose some functionality. Specifically, you'll lose the Windows Recovery Console. However, that's really easy to fix. Just take that USB drive, you know, the one that we created at the beginning of the video, and just select Upgrade instead of Create Media at that section where we created the media. The upgrade process should fix your BCD file and create another Windows Recovery Partition. Unfortunately though, when you do that, it creates a second recovery partition, leaving the old one just sitting there wasting 500 megs of space. You can recover that space if you want by using a partitioning tool, but it's not necessary. Also, if you're dual booting into multiple versions of Windows or another operating system like Linux, then you'll have to modify your BCD file to reflect the other operating systems that's installed. But that'll be for another video. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do a video on dual booting with the Windows BCD. So hopefully this guide will help your non-booting system boot again, or at least it's something that you can bookmark for later when you might need it. As I've stated before, it's rarely necessary to reload Windows. Even in the case of this, where your system doesn't boot at all because of a corrupted bootloader, it is fixable. This system right here is just as reliable as it was before we intentionally broke it at the beginning of the video. So, don't be afraid to roll up your sleeves and to get a little dirty and fix a broken Windows install. You know, it's honestly a lot easier than reloading it. Personally, I think it's way easier and you don't have to reinstall all your programs. But now that you have your system booting again, it might be a good idea to make sure you don't have any corrupted system files. Whatever corrupted your bootloader, you know, it could possibly have corrupted other files as well. For that, check out this video where I show you the proper way to use the system file checker in Windows. That's the video that started this series and it's able to fix a lot of problems with Windows. SFC Scan Now works a lot better than you think it does if you use the tool properly. But as always, you guys have a great day.